Hello everyone, this is Isaac from Serific Pathways, and this is going to be an intro video on the Life Path Checkup series that I will be doing. And this is going to be for the ones of you that are not familiar with what your Life Path number means and how you can calculate your Life Path number. So your Life Path number is basically very similar to your Sun Sign in Astrology. It tells you more about your identity. It reveals your strengths, your weaknesses, your talents, and also your ambitions in life. Now your life path number also exposes the tone of your experiences that you may find repeating within your life. Now what does that mean? There could be a certain pattern that you find repeating itself through throughout your life okay so you may go through similar situations and your life path number can reveal more about what those situations mean for you now how can you calculate your life path number basically what you want to do is you want to take every single digit within your birthday so let's say for example that I'm looking down at my calculator right now let's say that for example your birthday is January 12th, 1958. Okay, so plus nine, plus five, plus eight. So January 12th, 1958, for example, you would take the one, you would add it to the one, add it to a two, plus one, plus nine, plus five, plus eight. And if you do that, then you would come up with 27. Now, you would then take 2 plus 7, and 2 plus 7 equals 9. So if this is your birthday, then you would have a number 9 life path. There are two exceptions when it comes to this rule, guys. The first exception would be number 11. So if you calculate your life path number, and if it ends up in number 11, then you will not reduce... 11 down. You will just keep it as 11. The same thing goes with 22 because 11 and 22 in numerology are master numbers. So yeah, those two numbers do not get reduced. Also, if you do have one of those two life path numbers, number 11 or number 22, I would recommend that in addition to watching the 11 and 22 life path reading checkup, I would also recommend that you watch number four and number two, okay, because one plus one equals two, get it 11, and 22, two plus two equals four. So yeah, I hope that this provided some insight on your life path number and you can better understand what we will be talking about in this series. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with your life path checkup. All right, guys, so this is going to be for the ones of you that have life path number five, okay? Cinco. The way that I'm going to be breaking down this spread is I'll be pulling three tarot cards and I'll be clarifying each one of those cards, followed by three oracle cards to end this reading off okay please bear in mind that not every single thing that I mention in this video is going to be pertaining to every single person watching it but if the message does resonate then claim it let's go ahead and get started with you life path 5 this is for the ones of you that have life path number 5 Life Path 5. These messages are also on a timeless, which means whenever you're watching this, you can pertain it to whatever is happening in your life. Life Path number 5. Let's see what is happening with you guys. I'm 
I'm seeing that a lot of people are making up their minds about something, making up their mind about something, coming to a final decision. Um, you guys have the Six of Swords. The Seven of Cups. And the Ten of Pentacles. I'm getting that for a lot of Life Path Fives. This is talking about your money, your finances, some new job opportunity that could have came to you or an opportunity that is being presented to you. You could be choosing um, to, uh, you know, choose a better paying job or leave a job that's not paying you enough. Because the Six of Swords talks about moving on from something. I'm also getting that for some Life Path Fives, you're either planning a vacation or you're planning to travel at a long distance. Um, now there's also some indec there's indecisive energy that's surrounding you right now with the Seven of Cups. I'm also getting that someone could be tempting you. Especially if you're trying to move away from them or this person, this thing, something is trying to tempt you guys. Again, guys, it's going to be different for every single person. And then the Ten of Pentacles. Yeah, they could be trying to tempt you with money or you're being tempted with money. So I'm going to go ahead and clarify each one of these cards. But for the most part, I'm seeing... A lot of you have came out of a place of being indecisive, like you've made up your mind about something. In the past, with this seven of sor seven of cups, sorry, you were indecisive, but you've made up your mind about something. So let's see what this six of swords is talking about for you, Life Path Five. Let's see what you guys are moving away from. What is? What are these people moving away from? Thank you, Spirit. Okay. Interesting. We have the Ace of Cups that popped out. Could be a possible love offer for you. Choosing not to take up on it, or... If you're on the, on the other end of the spectrum, for the ones of you that are traveling, you could be moving closer to a person that you want to be with. Yeah, I'm getting that. I'm getting that instead. I'm getting that you've chose to move closer to a person that you're wanting to be with here, Life Path 5. Some of you, if this is relating to a person, you've waited for them to make up their mind, or they've waited for you to make up their mind. Your mind, sorry. If you were the one that was being indecisive like this person was waiting for you to make up your mind before they were actually going to commit to you um let's see what this seven of cups is talking about that's what this that's why i keep on saying seeing indecisiveness here i don't know who's it's coming from it could be someone that you're connected to what is this seven of cups talking about for life path five Queen of Pentacles. Some of you could be dealing with Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Um, you've made up your mind about a Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo. There could be a lot of changes surrounding this person. You guys also had the Five of Cups that popped out here, along with this Queen of Pentacles. Now we are talking about Life Path Five, and this is the Five of Cups. Hmm. 
So I want to see now what this Ten of Pentacles is talking about for you. What is this Ten of Pentacles talking about for Life Path 5? This is another intuitive message that I'm getting. Um, a lot of Life Path Fives, some of you guys have chosen to reach out to your family, in particular your mother, for some type of financial assistance. That's what this Ten of Pentacles could be talking about. Okay, so I pulled the... You guys pulled this page of wands here whenever I stop shuffling you had the two of cups you could be going to your mother about relationship advice as well life path five um yeah so let's go ahead and hop into the oracle portion of this reading hopefully that made some type of sense and that wasn't too confusing all right life path five you have the moon card you also have harmony and you guys also have clairvoyance preparing for clairvoyant clairvoyance this is your psychic advice card okay so again you guys had the moon card you have Harmony. There's a lot of nurturing that's going on with you. I'm getting that you could be dealing with a person. A lot of you guys are dealing with a person. Dealing with relationships. And it's tying back to your mother. Your mother is somehow involved. Your mother is somehow connected to this connection that you could have right now either she's directly involved or this could be a repeating pattern for you guys like the qualities of this person could remind you of your mother with the moon card the moon card is connected to the mother now as far as your psychic advice card this clairvoyance pre preparing for clairvoyance it reads, every person has the ability to open their third eye and use their sixth sense. It's a gift that lies within all of us. It just needs to be channeled. To prepare for clairvoyance, start by closing your eyes so the outside world does not distract you and you can focus on your third eye. Allow yourself to completely relax by meditating letting yourself zone out. The most important thing in preparing for clairvoyance is learning to trust yourself. Often we ignore our intuition, brushing it off as convenience, or we overthink everything too much because the answers come too easily. Just trust your first response to everything. If something tells you you're not going to go to the bank, don't go if something tells you to call your mother guys weren't we just talking about <laughs> weren't we just talking about um mothers if something tells you to call your mother call your mother your first instinct is always the right one and the more you keep following your gut feelings the stronger your sixth sense will become so some of you could be working with your intuition or developing your intuition, strengthening your intuition. Also advice from your higher self or whatever you choose to believe in. It's telling you to trust yourself more, trust your intuition, trust your gut instinct about something. If something does not feel right to you, it doesn't feel right to you. Sometimes it's hard to trust that initial instinct. Sometimes it's hard to do that. And trust me, I, you know, I'm not perfect, guys. That's one thing that I struggle with is 
I'm trusting myself with a few things, you know, I'm a work in progress, but yes, that's that's the psychic advice card that I have for you. Um, that's so funny, we were just talking about mothers, and this card mentioned your mother, so Life Path 5, your mother could be emphasized during this time period. It's very much highlighted, your relationship with her. Okay. So, I hope that you got something from this reading and it provided some insight to your situation. Sound off in the comments below if it did and give the video a thumbs up if you stuck around this far. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourself. Namaste.